I've been in rooms at the, the top of the top, which albums are prayed over demonically. Rituals, ceremonies, everything to give light to, to the devil, to Satan. It's a satanic music industry. If we're listening to the right stuff, wonderful, it lead me to God. And it leaves my thinking intact. If we're listening to the wrong stuff, bye-bye. Hi friends, in this video I will talk about how we unknowingly worship the devil through music and how we can learn to recognize the sound of God in a playlist full of demonic influences. Have you ever thought about the origins of music? Revelation 14, 2-3 describes heavenly sounds like rushing waters and thunder, identified as harpies playing. And I heard a sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters and like a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpies playing their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. The scenes highlight music's integral role in celestial praise. The Bible tells us that the angels continually sing of God's holiness. A choir of angels announced Jesus' birth with glory to God in the highest. In heaven, music transcends earthly sounds featuring divine instruments like harps and trumpets. Music is a divine gift, not a human invention. Some believe Lucifer, before his fall, was associated with heavenly music based on interpretations of Ezekiel 28, 12-15 and Isaiah 14, 11, 15. Ezekiel describes Lucifer's beauty and adornments. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. Isaiah references the sound of harps. Your pump is brought down to show the sound of your harps. It is clear that the Bible teaches music was one of God's most beautiful and divine creations made to worship Him. But since Satan and his angels were cast out of heaven, they replicated everything good they saw there with one small adjustment. Music was now created to worship Lucifer. Can music be a tool for mass manipulation? Oh yeah, big time. In a world marked by high demands, greed, and ongoing international discourse, manipulation is a tactic commonly used by employers, advertisers, and government officials. It involves skillful influence, often with unfair intentions, aiming to deceive workers, target specific audiences, or even entire populations. Music, a timeless constant throughout history, has played a significant role in this manipulation. English poet John Dryden famously exclaimed, What passions cannot music raise and quell? Recognizing music's profound impact on human emotions. The relationship between music and emotions is intricate. Music's ability to induce emotions has long been debated in scientific and psychological circles. Scholars like Klaus Scherer caution about the complexities of studying emotional responses to music, noting the challenges in differentiating between emotions and feelings. However, research by psychologists like Patrick Justin and Petri Lauka suggests that music can indeed induce emotions, particularly enjoyment, which is a common reason for listening to music. Moreover, music's effects on mood and behavior has been leveraged in various contexts. In the workplace, music has been used to increase productivity and relieve stress. Studies by researchers such as Harold Buris Mayer demonstrate the psychology 
psychological benefits of music in influencing workers' performance and emotions. Advertising executives also exploit music's persuasive power to enhance consumer purchases. Studies by Judy and Mark Alpert indicate that background music in supermarkets and diners can slow the pace of consumers, leading to increased sales. Similarly, music is used in advertising to tap into consumers' emotions, influencing their purchasing decisions. However, music's manipulation extends beyond commerce into more sinister realms. In times of war, music has been weaponized to intimidate and control adversaries. Examples from concentration camps during the Holocaust highlight music's use as a tool of torture and psychological torment. Even in contemporary contexts, music has been employed in interrogation and detention camps during the War on Terror, as documented by Suzanne Cusick. The effectiveness of music in manipulation comes down to its ability to evoke strong emotional responses and psychological reactions. Whether it's increasing productivity, driving consumer behavior, or exerting psychological control, music proves to be a powerful tool in the hands of manipulation. Despite the debates surrounding its ethical implications, music remains a potent force in shaping human emotions and behavior. Who are the voices of Satan? Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Katy Perry, Billie Eilish, Justin Timberlake, Madonna, Lady Gaga, Demi Levaro, Ariana Grande, Sam Smith, Rihanna, Harry Styles, Bambi Thug, and many more. God knows how many more. And these are just a few names that openly display their worship of Satan through their music. there is no need for contractual evidence of them selling their souls to the devil or proof of demonic prayers in music albums. I've been in rooms at the, the top of the top which albums are prayed over demonically. Rituals, ceremonies, everything to give light to, to the devil, to Satan. It's a satanic music industry. I say the devil's doing a great job of diverting your truths and Hollywood's, Hollywood is doing a great job of it too because it's it, that's what it's there to do, is to make you think it's all nonsense, of course. And if you think it's all nonsense, then the devil's laughing, and it's very real. It's all out there right in our faces, mocking God and his word through all their means. Yet we still follow them, and many of us say, oh come on, it's just for the show. Is it though? Let's take a look at Taylor Swift's recent concerts, where it looks like she's performing witchcraft on stage. The majority of her fans are teenagers. Do you still think it's just for show? Would you let your children go to one of her concerts? How would you feel about it? I'm curious about your opinion. Leave it in the comments below. Even songs you might not think can harm us, like Benson's Bones, Beautiful Things, inspire fear of losing what we love on this earth. Yet, God told us not to be attached to worldly things, but instead to keep our focus only on Him. 2 Timothy 1-7 states, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. From a Christian perspective, this verse reassures believers that fear does not come from God. Instead, God provides strength, love, and a sound mind. This suggests that any fear, especially fear of losing earthly things or loved ones, is not from God, but from other influences that distract from faith and trust in Him. In the context of Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Christians are encouraged to focus on their relationship with God and trust in his provision, rather than becoming anxious about material or earthly losses. 
Therefore, since God didn't give us a spirit of fear, fear must come from sources contrary to God's will, potentially from worldly influences or spiritual adversaries. Christians are encouraged to reject this fear and instead embrace the strength, love and peace that come from God, focusing on His kingdom and righteousness above all else. Another example of a song that seems meaningful but contradicts the Bible is The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. Though this is the original version, the most recent version of this song is trending everywhere on social media today. I'm sure most of you have heard it at least once played by the band Disturbed. If you listen closely, this song draws you into deep sadness and melancholy. While the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 4-7 Rejoice in the Lord always! And again I say, rejoice! Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A huge contrast from the words of the Bible can clearly be seen here. In my opinion, modern music is becoming more similar and repetitive, focusing less on quality and more on using predictable patterns to hook listeners. This appeals to people who don't listen closely, similar to how they mindlessly scroll through social media. The brain processes this repetitive music automatically, turning it into a habit to fill the silence. And that, my friends, is is extremely dangerous. Satan profits from it daily, infecting our minds with his teachings. Just think about how many times you've heard Lana Del Rey's Say Yes to Heaven on your social media reels. It goes like Say Yes to Heaven, Say Yes to Me, Say Yes to Heaven, Say Yes to Me. So why would you even dare to look up when she's your heaven? Can you see the pattern here? Satan is planting an important ideology that we, as humans, are gods. We are heaven. We are so good and great. Oh my god. And people are fundamentally good. Meanwhile, the Bible is full of texts like this one in Mark 10, 18. And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Crazy, dangerous songs are everywhere, and if we don't pay too much attention, we might wake up one day very far away from God and His teachings without even noticing. But I still think there are some good examples here and there, like... It's like a symphony, just keep listening. Can we stop listening to music influenced by demons? Well, I think deep down we all know the answer to this one. If we cut scene at its roots, we have a better chance to succeed. At least that's what I did. One day, I asked God to take full control over my life. And you know what? After making this internal decision, the Holy Spirit nudged me every time I played a song that wasn't for God's glory. Some of them were really hard to give up because there was nothing visibly wrong with the lyrics. It was just that feeling in my stomach telling me this is wrong. Like this one. I don't know, something feels really wrong about his moves. They are really scary. So 
So I recently stopped listening to all music that doesn't motivate me to do better in life. Music that is sad, scary, subliminal, toxic, sexual, etc. Bad songs are like glitches because after hearing them once, they attack your heart and mind and it's hard, extremely hard to let go. I'm still tempted to listen to sad songs from time to time because I'm an artist and sometimes I like to suffer for no reason. But then the Holy Spirit wakes me up with this message. Go on the internet and search for the lyrics of this song. And I do, and most of the time they contain some sort of new age images, messages, or lines that are definitely not in alignment with the word of God. To be honest, sometimes I'm not even sure if some worship songs are good to listen to. Some give me really bad feelings, like this one. I don't know, the start of the song just gives me chills, like something bad is about to happen. Plus all those black dress singers and the dark scenery with red and blue lighting make me wonder what god they are referring to. Also, Michael Smith is all dressed in black. Strangely enough, it also reminds me of Michael Jackson's song. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, do let me know in the comments if you feel the same. Certain kinds of music with the back beats, with the accent on the wrong um, beats. For instance, I want to give our viewers a, an example of what I'm talking about. If we are listening to a song, and I'm going to use a simple song like Jesus Loves Me, and I'm just going to say, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. The emphasis is on the one beat, okay? It's more of a march. Bum, 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 right? And now we can also move the accent. We can duplicate that and put it on the one and on the three. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know. Kind of like a child would sing it. It's innocent, it's on the one and three. All we have to do is shift the accent to the two or to the two and the four, or just the three. Sounds kind of confusing, but it would be like this. Jesus loves me, this I know. Oh, for the Bible tells me so. Oh, little ones to him be long. Oh, all of a sudden, you have what, what we call like a rap or a hip hop feel. It's the same word, same type feeling of the, uh, the, excuse me, the same type of melody or whatever, but all we've done is move the accent. The moment we move the accent, from the one or three, it becomes a syncopated beat. Syncopation by all occult experts around the world agree, syncopation is the source of occult power in pagan worship services. Really? Oh yeah. So this is profound to the Christian. Now we're in, a, in our homes, we're in our cars, listening to Christian music that has all these beats and syncopated things in it, and we're going, oh, this is great, this is wonderful. What it actually does, just like it does to, to ancient voodoo worshipers and modern day voodoo worshipers in their religious services, is it short circuits the frontal moral lobe. It gets them to a place to where they can become possessed. It's called the place of the crossroads between the physical and the spiritual. And now in the church, we have this thing going on and we call it the moving of the Holy Spirit. That's pretty profound thinking. That's pretty profound, yeah. Okay, so all of a sudden we're getting this, our mind going and we're getting, uh, not our mind going, we're getting our emotions going, we're taking that frontal moral lobe and we're casting it off and whatever the preacher's preaching goes in without interpretation. God said no. Reason. Reason with me. So I know right there that is not of, the, not, not of God, it's of the devil. Because the devil doesn't want us to reason out who he is because if we really reasoned it out, what he stood for and what he's trying to do for us, we would run from him. Exactly. But because we're adopting his things and we're embracing his stuff, if you will, and his music, we run to him and run away from God. Is it working? Yeah, yeah it's working. It's very powerful. And so the reality is, yes, music, can profoundly influence our characters. And so music thus becomes a very moral issue. If we're listening to the right stuff, wonderful, it lead me to God. And it leaves my thinking intact. If we're listening to the wrong stuff, 
bye-bye frontal prefrontal cortex is actually what it's called the front of the brain where your right. character is your where your will is where you want to obey where your reasoning powers are that's bye-bye in fact some of the music rips it out spits it in half tears it in half and stomps it on the ground it's incredible what it does and we just sit there in an alpha pattern whatever the music is teaching whatever that not now listen not just the lyrics I said the music is teaching because people go, oh, well, this music, it has Jesus lyrics, and it talks about Jesus. Okay, that's the greatest claim out there in CCM, the Contemporary Christian Music Movement. The problem is music itself has a motive. Music itself has a, an attitude. Music itself has body language. So I could say, I love Jesus. Now, what did you think when I said that? That you love Jesus. Why? The way you said it. It was the way, exactly. It wasn't what I said those words are pretty a good clue but it was the way because I could also say this I love Jesus yeah. now what would you say about that well you don't like him very well you're saying something's up here That's why because yeah. the motive of my body language it betrayed the words the music that we listen to can betray the Jesus lyrics right does that make sense oh yeah absolutely. okay so what if we are listening to music that has all these driving beats and it's attached to a genre of rebellion, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It undermines the Jesus message. Absolutely. And everybody knows that except for the Christians. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So, sorry to cut the chords here, but many of the songs we listen to are not even close to making melody in our heart to the Lord. Have you ever counted how many songs in your playlist are worshiping God? That's it for today, beautiful people. I hope I have helped you a little more. Let this motivate you to stop believing the deceptions of Satan and to base your understanding solely on the Bible. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to support my channel, please consider subscribing. This will help me share the good message with more people. Thank you.